Hi, Rich Powell from ClearPath here. I'm going to share a few thoughts today on the Energy Sector Innovation Credit, or ESIC, a new approach to clean energy innovation that we are tracking closely. To take a step back, energy sector innovation and broader efforts to address climate change should resemble the best of tech startups, fast, exciting, and good for consumers. But the complexity of the energy tax code and energy market can stymie American ingenuity. In the past, the tax code has been hugely helpful in scaling up new clean energy innovations. Shale gas received roughly $10 billion through the Alternative Production Tax Credit. Solar has had the benefit of the Investment Tax Credit, or ITC, and wind power has for decades received the Wind Production Tax Credit, or PTC. We now have PTCs in place for nuclear and carbon capture, and we offer several more ITCs to other clean energy technologies. Tax approaches to date, however, have suffered from a few serious drawbacks. Investment tax credits are good for investors' certainty, especially for the first few demonstrations of a technology. By being based only on how much someone invests, however, the resulting clean energy production is uncertain. Production tax credits are better in that we taxpayers only support the clean energy that is actually produced. However, traditional production tax credits have significantly distorted some markets, leading technologies to produce at times that the market does not value the power and causing what are known as negative pricing events. And this hodgepodge of different types of credits for different technologies at different levels on different timelines does not create a clear, consistent market signal for investors or innovators and leads to constant legislative battles over extending credits for favored technologies. So how would this new ESIC incentive try to solve all of this? First, ESIC takes a technology-inclusive approach. This means that eligible new sources of power can span the full gamut of tools, from a new coal or gas power plant that can capture and store its carbon emissions, to an advanced nuclear reactor, to next-generation batteries that store excess power from wind, solar, and other renewable generation. Importantly, new power plants couldn't qualify if they're also receiving the hodgepodge of other incentives already on the books. But ESIC would be a permanent feature of the tax code, continuing to exist even after these other credits expire. Second, the credit is set up to provide the appropriate level of support for a new technology at each stage of development. Developers have the option of an investment tax credit or a production tax credit, providing financing options on a project-by-project -project basis. For example, if the technology is brand new, it will pay out at 60% of whatever a plant earns selling power, or at 40% of the investment necessary to move the project forward. In the case of the Emerging Energy Technology Production Credit option, that means that if the market values power at $100 in one hour, and the plant meets that demand, the incentive pays out $60 for that hour. On the other hand, if the market only values power at $10 during an hour, which might occur when the temperatures are moderate, it would only pay out at $6 during that hour. At times when there's an oversupply of power and additional megawatt hours are valued at zero, the incentive would pay out nothing at all. In other words, ESIC differs from the credits of old by working with markets, not against them. And by paying more to technologies that can respond to market signals, ESIC will drive innovation to the most flexible clean power sources. Third and finally, ESIC is designed to automatically sunset for each new technology. The legislation would set up four tiers of early market penetration based on the technology's share of national power generation, evenly dividing the space from 0 to 3% of national power generation. Within each tier, a developer would have the option to choose either this Emerging Energy Technology Production Credit or the Investment Tax Credit. Both the Production Tax Credit and the Investment Tax Credit start high, at 60 and 40% respectively, and then decline as the technology gains market share. This built-in ramp down automatically weans each technology off of government support. Then the technology will either thrive on the marketplace on its own, or developers will experiment with other new technologies. Policymakers are piecing together the puzzle needed to develop and deploy technologies that are cleaner, cheaper, and more flexible for both the US and global energy markets. ESIC is a financial incentive that could be a corner piece of that puzzle. Thanks for listening.